Hey, well, welcome back to uh, Rad Repairs. This is episode two, and today I'm going to be fixing a original Xbox that will not eject discs. Uh, and if it does eject, uh, it usually doesn't go back in and stay in, and that's a problem. So if yours is experiencing this problem, where you power it up, can you hear that sound? You get this little flashing light here. Try to hit the button to eject, and it doesn't eject. Well, this tutorial is probably for you. The good news is, is there's actually a really easy fix. Now you may have seen another video on YouTube of a guy trying to fix this through the actual opening door of the Xbox. And kudos to that guy for being able to fix it that way. Um, that's, that's pretty hard to do. Um, now granted, he didn't tear holes in the stickers on the bottom of his Xbox to do it, which is great if you're trying to keep your system intact, but if you really want to fix it the right way without having to uh, finagle inside the hole, then this is probably the best tutorial for you. You're going to need a few things before we do this. One, you're going to need to go on eBay and you're going to need to order this. And these are basically just small replacement rings for the CD drive. Uh, and that's going to be our issue, and you'll see them in, in a minute when I open this up and show you the old one. But they usually come in a pack of two, cost you less than $4 US. You're also going to need some tweezers, which we'll use later. You're going to need a TX or a T20 uh, screwdriver, as well as a T10, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Now, I've already taken the liberty of removing the six large screws that are on the bottom of the console. But I'll show you where they go, and that's why you're going to need that, that T20. These are the size of the screws, and they're located in six places. They're all under the feet on the outside edge, so you are going to have to pry up the feet of your device. They're all right here in the corner. There are also two inside of the stickers, which is what I was talking about. That guy didn't want to put holes in his stickers on the bottom, and that's, that's understandable if you're trying to keep your system intact. But once you remove all six, Flip your device back over, be careful because the top will now be loose. And go ahead and gently, uh, as gently as you can, lift it off. And it really just lifts straight up. We'll put that over here to the side. So now you can see the internal components. This is your CD drive and your hard drive. First thing we're going to do is take off the uh, IDE cable that's attached to both the CD drive and the hard drive. And just get a firm grip on that and try to as evenly as you can put pressure until it pops free. Same thing with the uh, optical drive. And we're just going to lay that off to the side. We're going to leave it plugged in though. Now for the hard drive, you're going to also want to unplug its power cable. We're just going to kind of wiggle that back and forth until we can get that loose. And then you're going to go ahead and remove the cable from the side component or from the side tray as best as you can. Now, there are three screws to get all of these components out. There's one here for the hard drive and two down here for the optical drive. So that's where your T10 comes in handy. I also like to have a little bowl nearby so I can take my screws and not lose them. So now that we've got the one out for the hard drive, we actually can go ahead and take this tray out. And it is this entire black tray right here. Now that power cable is gonna wanna hold on. So once you get it out a little bit, now you've got some room away from the metal housing inside the Xbox to go ahead and remove that cable pretty easily. Let's just lay that off to the side. Two more screws, as I mentioned, in the optical drive area. One down there, and one down here. There we go. Now I intentionally have not disconnected the power cable to the optical drive just yet because it's kind of hard to get to. But once you have your screws out, this is the same exact thing. You've got this assembly, again, the, just like the hard drive has, this plastic uh, housing for it. Once you have it out, now you can actually get in there and remove that power cable to the optical drive. Let's clear some space here. Move our Xbox 360, or excuse me, my Xbox over. And now this has little clips on the side. It's kind of hard to see, but there's one in here and one on the other side, right back in the back. You just kind of want to give that a little bit of pressure until it pulls out. It's plastic, it'll bend, just be careful. There we go. Now let's flip the device over. And on the bottom, we have four regular Phillips head screw screws. So grab your Phillips head screwdriver, and let's take those out. Great. 
flip your optical drive back over. And now, the metal uh, casing that's on top should just come right off. Just be careful. There we go. Now, we still need the drive to open because otherwise it's a little resistant to us uh, actually being able to get to the, uh, the band that's underneath, which is causing our issue. So, take your screwdriver or some other straight device and you'll see this little plastic piece right here. Push in on that, just go easy, until the drive starts to release. As soon as it starts to release, release stop pushing, and put your device back down, and go ahead and slide it back open. Now this band right here, where this wheel is, you kind of see it spinning, it's because I'm pushing it. It does spin, it does open intermittently, but I'm telling you right now, this band is the issue. So we're just gonna make as much space as we can in here. This square area inside the, uh, the tray is probably the best area to do that. We're gonna grab our tweezers. Just grab the band there, give it a little stretch, go around that wheel, and it comes straight out. Now, I wanna show you how we know this is the problem. Let's take a look at a brand new one. Take a look at our old one. You'll notice that it's unevenly worn. It's completely stretched out. It's a lot larger and it's not in a circle anymore, it's in kind of an oval. And when they wear down, that's exactly what happens. So, let's get rid of this guy, and let's put the new guy in. Now for this, you can, you can still use your tweezers, you can also use your fingers. We're gonna wanna put it around that big circle first, that big wheel. Now we're gonna grab it, now we've got some space. Stretch that out to the outside of that. Of the small second wheel. Go around just a little bit. Just gonna make sure the band's not twisted at all. Just gonna make sure it's nice and straight, and even all the way around. That looks pretty good. Oh yeah, beautiful. And we can push that back in. It's not gonna go all the way in uh, without it being connected electronically, unless you actually open it up, or excuse me, uh, hold it up with your screwdriver, kind of push that lever back out. Once you do that, the drive will lock back in place. It's not really important. You can leave it alone and then let the uh, power do it when you plug it back in for the first time. Uh, but I just like doing it and I wanted to show you how to do it. All right, so now we're just gonna work in reverse order. Put our casing back on nice and secure. Flip it over and get our Phillips head screws back in place. I'd say this whole repair probably takes about five total minutes when you're not blabbing on through it like I am. And for less than four dollars, repairing your uh, slightly dysfunctional Xbox, it's not a bad deal at all. All right, drives put back together. Let's slide it back inside of our plastic housing here. locked in. All right, let's make some space for our Xbox. Bring that over. Don't forget to put the power cable back in while you've got it out. It's a heck of a lot extra room uh, to work with. Otherwise, you have to take it back out again or just try to wiggle it back into place. Now you just need to line up these plastic uh, holes. It can be kind of a pain in the butt, but make sure it's nice and flat and even on this side. Uh, when you put it back in, otherwise when you try to put the case back on, you'll realize, oh, I don't have that in all the way, and your screw probably won't go in all the way either, which can be a problem. All right, let's grab our T10 again. Recommend, uh, recommend using one that is slightly magnetized. Again, when you work with electronics, uh, you want to avoid magnets most of the time, but having a slightly magnetized screwdriver really helps put these little tiny screws back inside um, when they're so far down. Just be careful. All right, we've got our two screws back in up front. Now we need to get our power cable back inside of our hard drive tray. There we go. And it's just gonna sit right back down just, just like the CD tray fits in. You also notice this little nub here helps guide that in there. Okay. 
feed our power cable back into its little uh, clips here to help hide it. Go ahead and put your power back in there. Beautiful. And our IDE cable. There's one more screw that'll hold the hard drive housing in. Oops. Right here on top. I think we're ready for our cover. Slides right back down on top. Give it a good push. And then you flip it over and you put your six long screws back in the bottom. But for the sake of time, let's plug it in and see what happens. Well, how about that? Hey, I hope you enjoyed this repair and I hope you forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time on Rad Repairs.